Back in early 2015, I fell in love with the chateau I found online. I then had to convince my other half to give up our London life and move to rural France. To my surprise, she said yes, and a year later said yes again at our wedding at the chateau we now called our home. It's just us two and our husky lightning. And now, of course, a few animals who seem to have joined us along the way. It's such a beautiful place to live, so we decided to share it with everyone. It's obviously a lot of hard work for just us two. It's not always a fairy tale, and we don't always get it right. But it's all fantastic fun along the way, as we bring this chateau back to life for others to enjoy as much as we do. Follow us, Angelina and Phil, along with the highs and lows of our Chateau life. everyone and welcome back to another episode of Chateau Life. I hope you have all had a superb Christmas day and Boxing Day. I'm not sure if it's just me but the day after Boxing Day today is usually the day where I'm the most tired because I've been far too festive. Hope no one else is in the same situation and everyone's had a great break. What are we getting on with? Quite a bit. Angelina is simply painting some more coats of white on the panelling in our morning room. And we've got a New Year's Eve party, which we have to get ready for. And one of those jobs is getting a wood burner in this TV room. I do love this room. And we're going to obviously be using this for some of the entertaining space, along with some of the other rooms. But we need to get a wood burner in over there so we can really make it warm and cosy. And of course with the rather much colder temperatures now, we need to um, use heating we've got in the form of logs rather than always buying pellets. Beautiful mirror over the mantelpiece. And then this is where we need to get a wood burner because this is just to hide in fact there is nothing there. And we would really like that heat. So everything I'm doing at the moment is just trying to get caught up get the stuff up in the room as well, but also do the best with the time that's left available. I have to try to get a wood burner in another room because the freezing temperatures have arrived and it needs it because we've got an abundance of seasoned wood here to burn to try to keep us warm. Uh, and obviously the rest of the heating bits are expensive. So let's utilize what we've got and try to save some money. And this means I need to try to get that in work in order and Every minute counts, so I'm going to try to get on with getting it ship shape and then get back in the room and do some more while Angelina's at work around those radio feet. The start of any project is to clean it all up and see what you're working with and what needs repairing. So let's get cleaning it up. my trusty little paraffin space heater on this both to keep me warm and to keep the metal warm because I want to get this into some sort of protection shortly this has all been cleaned up and actually once you've got rid of the surface rust this is in good condition over here we just need to redo 
the seals between the gaps and that's fine because that is something that needs to be done after a while and no one ever does it uh it won't let uh gases out because if it's connected to a chimney it will have a draw but it will let air in which means you cannot control the fire very well um as in the uh, amount of air getting to it and how strong the fire is so we'll redo those but looking better let's carry on just taking a break to stand up so the knees don't hurt uh, sign of old age i think um thought i'd address a couple of the comments which were really wonderful uh, some great suggestions there as i said you can't weld cast iron unless it's made very very hot and you slow the cooling process and i was looking for so anyone's experience of actually doing that and most a, lot, a few people came up back and said yes yeah exactly that so thank you so much a couple of other comments though um chuck it away and buy a new one kind of not what we're about here uh if we wanted to be easy you just knock this place down and uh build a new house and you uh it's, it's not what we're about also uh no it's not cheaper they're about three thousand euros that particularly godin um colonial wood burner so it wouldn't be saving any money buying a new one and again not what we're about let's save things where we can in this world rather than just replace them it's a much better thing to do but let me show you why this has rotted out in certain areas because in case you've got a wood burner at home you won't have this issue so on both sides this little locking tab underneath has gone and then there's rot along the rear edge that is because people don't clean out their wood burners properly and especially not after the winter before the next year so it's all very well just clearing out the ashtray underneath a uh, wood burner but you really need to get an ash vacuum or sweep all of the debris from the back of them up what happens is lots of people just never do winter over you just sort of clean out the wood burner or worse still you actually just leave it from the last fire of the winter until the next year and that ash that's built up all around the back edges um, it sits there and then moisture gets to it um, through the chimney, condensation, all the rest of it. And then it just holds moisture in those areas right at the back and eventually rots. And it's a common thing. So I'll fix it on this one, but I don't let it happen to, the, to this one again or the other ones we've got. back and side clean down and the appropriate stove paint applied i appreciate that where the repairs are i will have to grind back and paint again i just want to protect this metal as soon as it was cleaned up um, because that's the best thing to do and of course it gets somewhere i can't do more than that for a second because i have to have this paraffin heater blowing the hot air at it otherwise it's too cold for the paint to dry properly. So I'm gonna get on with that and go inside. <laughs> 